British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has reportedly admitted to errors in the week-long corruption allegation against his Tory party. In a round of particularly critical conservative backbenchers, Johnson admitted to having hit the wall, as reported by the BBC on Thursday. Quite unbelievable. So, the corruption allegations against the Tories have dominated the headlines in Great Britain since Johnson tried to protect an affected party colleague from punishment. Further revelations about MPs such as the former chief legal advisor to the government, who earned hundreds of thousands of pounds through consulting contracts with firms in tax havens in the Caribbean, further fueled the issue. Why does never anybody offer me such a job? <laughs> the British Parliament passed Johnson's proposals on last week's Wednesday to tighten the rules governing outside employment for MPs. However, not even all representatives of his own party voted in favor. The opposition Labour Party had proposed a more specific timetable for the upcoming reform. In an interview with the BBC, Labour politician Rachel Reeves criticized that urgent reforms would now be postponed indefinitely. The reason for the debate was the Conservative MP Owen Patterson, who was due to be suspended from Parliament for 30 days for paid lobbying. But the Prime Minister did not want to accept that and decided instead to overturn the disciplinary procedure for MPs. However, the criticism was so severe that the government turned around a day later. So another U-turn there. After two weeks full of corruption allegations against British MPs and revelations of their sometimes sensational part-time jobs, the British House of Commons passed new rules late on Wednesday. Accordingly, parliamentarians can no longer pursue second jobs without restriction. The House of Commons voted on Wednesday for a new set of rules that would prohibit people's representatives from paid activities as political advisors. However, a more sharply worded submission by the opposition Labour Party that would have banned further second jobs was previously rejected. It would have also given a stricter time frame for the implementation of the reform after the responsible parliamentary committee should have drawn up new rules by January 31st. Against this background, the opposition raised serious allegations against the Conservative Tories. They had watered down drafts that would have made an even greater difference. According to research by the British newspaper The Guardian, 90 of the 360 Conservative MPs have paid jobs alongside their parliamentary work, but only 5 of the 199 Labour MPs. The debate started with the affair, as I said, of long-time Conservative backbencher Owen Patterson at the beginning of November. If it had been up to the responsible parliamentary committee, Patterson should have been suspended for 30 days for illegal lobbying activities for the Northern Irish pharmaceutical company Rendox. Instead, the government under Conservative Prime Minister Boris Johnson tried with an absolute majority to replace the rules of the disciplinary procedure in Parliament with a new system that would be more favourable to them. It was not only because of this that there were also allegations from within. Johnson's government also broke the parliamentary convention that changes of this kind could only be made with the affirmation of the opposition. Under severe criticism, cabinet members backed out the next day while Patterson resigned from office. The company Rendox involved had received government contracts for protective clothing worth over half a million euros during the pandemic. Critics speak of an unequal selection process in which companies advertised by conservative politicians have 10 times higher chances of winning contracts than others. This led to orders for inadequate protective clothing and inadequate COVID-19 tests. Rendox received, among other things, orders without sufficient machine capacities. Further revelations about a conservative MP had recently also fueled the debate. For example, it emerged that the former Attorney General Sir Geoffrey, Geoffrey Cox had raised more than 1 million euros as legal advisor for the Bahamas in addition to his parliamentary work. When the Prime Minister's weekly question time began on Wednesday, Johnson was one of the few government officials who had not yet apologized for what had happened over the past two weeks. In return, opposition leader Keir Starmer put him through the grind. But 
In the late afternoon, Johnson is said to have taken responsibility among the conservative backbenchers. According to reports, he described his own approach to the Patterson case as a car accident on the straight track. Boris Johnson has not been able to bring himself to a public apology for a long time. But at a meeting with MPs from his Conservative Party, the British Prime Minister apparently left no doubt that he regretted his behavior in the discussion of questionable MP sideline employment. He drove the card against the wall in broad daylight, he is said to have told parliamentary group colleagues on Wednesday evening. Previously, they had approved a government bill, as I said, in the lower house and adopted stricter rules for the extra income of elected officials. It remains to be seen whether this will put the line under the yeah, felt debate that has been going on for weeks. It originated from the discussion about the extra earning of MPs, as I said, but I'm still expecting Boris Johnson to make a public apology, but we won't see that one. But at least Patterson, with whom everything started, has resigned his parliamentary mandate. And in, in, in a case like this, this is really just the thing to do. But um, when you have two companies paying you for being a consultant and then those companies get the, um, the, the orders from the government, we had the same here in Germany. Those guys either left parliament or were kicked out of their parties. And I expect the same somewhere else. The um, regrets from Johnson, well, he publicly distanced himself from Patterson now. He should have recognized the rule break of his fellow party member earlier. He said in, a, in that committee I was talking about from Wednesday, and there he spoke of a total mistake, but not in public. The felt allegations, which have now captured other, other Tory MPs, let the Conservatives slip in the polls. Some pollsters see the Conservatives in favor of the citizens for the first time behind the Labour Party. Two former Conservative Prime Ministers, John Major and Theresa May, recently complained about Johnson. It wasn't for the first time. The center of internal party resentment is formed by the new MPs from the north of England, who were able to win traditional Labour constituencies for the Tories for the first time in December 2019. They fear that the Conservatives' redesigned image as a party for the socially disadvantaged could suffer as a result of the affair. Well, lobbying is a double-edged sword. Of course, a talk by rabbit breeders' associations is just as much lobbying as one of, of pharmaceutical representatives, but there must be limits, especially when MPs are getting paid. But lobbying is happening everywhere and in many different forms. We just had a current example at the Climate Summit. I read about this here in Germany. Journalists from the unearthed investigative team of Greenpeace in the UK have documents that clearly show how the fossil fuel lobby intends, intended to influence the climate conference. That was reported by Greenpeace themselves and BBC News, to which the documents were also presented. And the data spoke a clear language. States that benefit from the use of fossil fuels, including Saudi Arabia, Japan and Australia, were trying to influence the UN in assessing the situation. The urgency to move away from fossil fuels should be downplayed, according to BBC News. The documents also showed that some wealthy nations were questioning whether poorer states should get their financial support to switch to green technology. Well, these statements are particularly questionable in a temporal context. In a few weeks' time, the United Nations should come to an agreement um, on, on the... Um, no, two weeks ago, they had to come to the agreement on the COP26. And according to the documents that were out there before, the goals set in the current report are therefore questioned in the current recommendation of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, according to the BBC. An advisor to the Saudi Arabian oil ministry therefore called for sentences such as the need for an urgent and accelerated mitigation of climate damage of any magnitude to be deleted from the report. A political representative from Australia denied the need for all coal-fired power plants to be taken out of operation, although 
The move away from coal energy is one of the climate goals set at the conference. Given that Saudi Arabia is the world's largest oil supplier and Australia has a large export of coal, this may not come as a surprise, but it's not a climate-friendly future plan. The report by the investigative journalists also cited other messengers of similar content. Australia and Switzerland were therefore against financial support for the poorer countries. Brazil and Argentina see a need for discussion on the question of reducing meat production. And some Eastern European countries saw the assessment of nuclear energies as too negative. Well, that goes a little bit with me as well. BBC News asked the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to what extent these lobbyist comments influence their ratings and recommendations. The Council's answer was, comments by the government are a central part of the scientific evaluation process and the authors are under no obligation to include them in the report. Our processes are designed to protect against lobbying regardless of the direction, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change told BBC News. The evaluation process is fundamentally important for the work of the Climate Council and its greatest strength is the informative value and the credibility of reports. Professor Corinne uh, Lequier, leading climate scientist who has already contributed to three reports by the Climate Council, has no doubts about the independence of the climate reports. There is absolutely no compulsion for the scientists to include the comments submitted. Tested for scientific validity, if, well, if they did not have them and if they consist of pure lobbying, then they will not be concluded in the reports the scientists told the BBC News. But politicians are at work at, at COP, or were at work at COP26 and look at the end result. It is not exactly what everybody was hoping for. So you could wonder how much influence there was. I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.